Hello everyone and today in this uh, lecture series we will discuss about the drug likeliness and drug properties. So why this is of very important is that before subjecting any drug to docking studies like uh, interacting your drug that is the ligand with your protein you must notice that whether the drug which you have chosen is a drug or not. Okay, simply you can't take a molecule and you cannot consider it as a drug and you can't subject it to docking studies. So rather what you have to do, you must confirm whether the molecule or the ligand which you have taken is a drug or not with certain properties which have been stated. That will be discussed in brief in this video. Okay, now one thing you have to notice here is that how the drug discovery is taking place. Let's have a glance at it. It involves around four steps, right? So what are the four steps? One is the target to hit. Yeah, you will choose a target, no, the protein. So that is a step one. And then the hit to lead, the ligand. You'll be choosing the ligand with the proper drug properties. And three, you will lead it to candidate identification. You just, what you do? You combine one and two. You take the protein, you take the ligand, the ligand or the molecule or the drug which has the drug property. Okay, you just combine them both, that you call it as the docking studies and finally what happens when the docking is successful and you go with the candidate selection, you just test it with some organisms. Finally, after these four stages, it leads to the clinical candidate after all the successful data and results obtained. This is all about the drug discovery, right? Okay, now let's go how to determine whether a drug is a drug or not. So you should know a background idea, a little background idea about the drug likeness, okay? You can define the drug like is defined as those compounds that have sufficiently acceptable ADME properties and sufficiently acceptable toxicity properties. Okay, there are two properties indicated here, the ADME property and the toxicity property. Okay, what this ADME property actually mean? It is an abbreviation which expands as absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion. You can see the picture over here which represents the pharmacokinetics of the ADME mechanism, right? What happens? You just take a medicine. So, first thing is absorption, how it will get into your body. That is the first thing and second thing how it will be distributed in your body where all the transporters your blood vessels and everything does that work and number three is the metabolism how the drug is going to be broken down how the ingredients and the actions are going to be done that is governed by the liver and finally the unabsorbed drug okay which is left over which is not at all transported or it's not used or broken down how it is going to be excreted so these four process involve for a drug whether it is a drug like or not you can determine with that okay okay now so this ADME and the toxicity characteristics are very important for a compound two people come into picture over here one is the medicinal chemist and the other is your biologist Okay, what this medicinal chemist actually do? They actually control the properties of the drug through structural modification. Yes, you have to do the structural modification in order to get and control the properties of the drug to be a drug. Okay, that is one thing which has been done here. And number two is the biologist. After getting the properties from the medicinal chemist about the drug, he starts to optimize the bioassays and interprets the biological experiments. He goes on to test with various organisms to get uh, the potency of the drug, right? So finally, what you can conclude is that your drug-like property determination is an integral part in the drug discovery, okay? So before uh, you subject any drug in the market or for any clean trial you must determine whether the molecule or the ligand which you have taken is a drug after that only you can go for the docking studies okay so that's one thing you have to know so in uh, docking studies we did know uh, like uh, you will be seeing that uh, a ligand will be taken and it will be subjected to dock with the protein so we just took the uh, drug and just docked it right but before that one important step should be done is that you should take the drug and analyze whether it is a drug there are many properties in that okay the main property is that 
you should do the structural modification if any problems in your drug you should be able to do the structural modification that is a very important thing which the medicinal chemist do yeah so the drug has various properties that are listed over here one such uh, properties the structural properties then the physiochemical properties the biochemical properties and others include the pharmacokinetics and the toxicity clearance see the structural properties include hydrogen bonding polar surface area shortly called as psa lipophilicity shape molecular weight reactivity and pka physiochemical properties include the solubility permeability and chemical stability biochemical properties include the metabolism protein and tissue binding transport and everything here you see the solubility right so all these properties put together make a compound or a molecule as a drug so the all these properties should be of an appropriate level which can be calculated either using computer you can do it right so using computer it does the work very simply okay okay let's see how these properties are correlated okay yes you can see when the structural properties interact with the physical environment they create physiochemical properties example they are the solubility what are the structural properties yeah you can see all the structural properties right hydrogen bonding and everything you can see the shape molecular weight polar surface so all are related to somehow related to solubility so when these structural properties interact with the physical environment of the drug then you will create a physiochemical property that is the solubility example okay then see when your structural properties when they interact with the protein see structural property means your drug now your drug is going to interact with the protein then what property is created biochemical property is created for example it is the metabolism which is responsible for the metabolic activities in the human body okay at the highest level one thing you have to notice is that these physiochemical properties and the biochemical property now combine or they interact with the living system and they cause pharmacokinetics and toxicity this is how the other parameter the pharmacokinetics and toxicity come into picture okay so when these two properties are combined because here your drug is structurally modified and here your drug is docked and finally it is going to be subjected to a living system right so there you will be studying the pharmacokinetics and the toxicity this is very important which creates whether the drug is suitable for mankind or not or for the organisms which they have prepared that drug okay so see the medicinal chemist they control the pharmacokinetics and toxicity properties of the compound by modifying the structure see it all starts by modifying the structure okay so that is the major and the primary thing which the chemist should do okay now what is this drug like likeness actually okay it's very simple it is a qualitative concept you can see here right it is a qualitative concept used in drug design for how drug like a substance is okay to determine whether your drug is a drug or not you just give a term drug likeness okay it depends upon various factors like bioavailability and etc which we'll be seeing later now okay and you can see that it is estimated from the molecular structure before the substance is even synthesized and tested see before it is synthesized and before it is tested for clinical trial you are just getting all the data about the drug whether it is a drug or not using your computers okay this is one such advantage which you have to notice here so let's discuss some of the drug like properties okay so one such property is your solubility okay what is this solubility see the aqueous solubility of a compound significantly affects its absorption and distribution characteristics yes you saw no the ADME mechanism and that the first one is your absorption that is the major role where the solubility influences it right so the aqueous solubility of a compound significantly affects your absorption and distribution characteristics right so the absorption and the distribution these two factors are affected by the aqueous solubility right so what is what how does it influence see a low solubility goes along with a bad absorption yes so if the solubility is very low it will go with bad absorption so it should dissolve properly it should be soluble to a maximum extent and the third point the general aim is to avoid poor soluble compounds yeah so when 
determining whether your drug is a drug like or not the first thing is your solubility yes what do you have to do <coughs> you have to take your drug your drug should be having maximum solubility what solvent can be used see uh, mostly the drugs are taken orally or the drugs are injected right so these two ways you can take a drug once most of the drugs are taken orally by us okay for a fever or something you just take you just take water for that <clears throat> you just put the tablet and you just take some water you will not put acetone you cannot take tetrahydrofuran or something and you just uh, make the medicine go inside and dissolve right so most of your medicines or your drug should be soluble in water that is very important there okay so that's one thing so how this solubility can be calculated how to determine the solubility of your drug so we have the log s calculation this is what will be done by the computer or this value will be computed okay so you can also calculate it okay so log s calculation so our estimated log s value is a unit stripped logarithm log base 10 of the solubility measured in mole per liter so it is measured in mole per liter so moreover it is related to concentration so when a solute is dissolved in a solvent it results in some concentration no so that unit is given for this law s calculation right okay you can see a diagram over here right so in that you see that more than 80 percent of the drugs on the market have estimated log s value greater than minus 4 see so the log s value should be greater than minus 4 this is one of the information you get so a lot of drugs are available in the market now and after getting some statistics they have found that most of the drugs nearly 80 percent of the drugs have been estimated to have log s value greater than minus 4 see here you get one beautiful information so your molecule or your drug to be a drug like it should have log s value greater than minus 4 see you can see the peak over here okay this one thing you have to know there are many factors uh, which um, involved in solubility one such thing is when you increase okay the solubility can be increased by adding the ionizable group or reducing log p and molecular weight see here comes some three parameters the ionizable group reducing the log p and the molecular weight see these two are some new properties now so solubility was one property and that solubility can be increased by adding ionizable group or either reducing your log p and molecular weight see so when you reduce the molecular weight that also influences the solubility that's one thing beautiful thing we have noticed and see the compound structure whether it is crystalline amorphous like that so that those kind of things also influence the solubility factor and then see the solubility is also affected by the physiochemical properties so which can be ex estimated using in vitro assays or some software calculations yeah this we are going to do uh, later in the next lecture series by Karthik he will be demonstrating you how to use the software calculations for uh, determining the physiochemical properties and see of course the lipophilicity which is determined by the van der Waals dipolar hydrogen bonds ionic interaction see we are getting more and more properties associated with the solubility right solubility is a physiochemical property it is relating with the structural property which leads to your biochemical properties and finally the molecular weight and shape is yes of course and the pka yeah it's very important uh, in the body for the molecule to be a drug like which is determined by the functional group ionizability this is one important thing so, okay which leads to the salt formation when it is forming an ionic salt it's very easy the molecule is highly soluble and it can be excreated the last process is successful and the transportation is also successful and finally the crystal lattice energy which is determined by the crystal stacking and melting point yeah this is one of the very important uh, thing about the drug okay so you have to notice and the next important property is your hydrophilicity okay which are obtained as a result of the c log p calculations where your p stands for partition coefficient okay so you know that the hydrophilicity represents uh, more likely to water right so that's a um, thing you have to note from the word over here so the log p calculation the partition coefficient calculation gives the details about this okay so this is calculated by comparing your compound between n octanol and water okay the n octanol and water system is used in order to get the details about the log p value see log c octanol by c water so this is the formula which has been established 
to measure the compounds hydrophilicity okay and then you see uh, one thing you have to notice is that when you have low hydrophilicities and therefore it will create high log p value cause poor absorption or permeation see so if your hydrophilicity that is your drugs uh, drugs potency to uh, be more likely to water is very less then what happens your log p value will be more right so very less means in water that the drug will not go much instead it goes with the octanol what happens so it's dissolving only in the organic uh, solvent like so in the no, uh, organic solvents and it's not uh, dissolving in the universal solvent water so what happens the partition coefficient value is more for your octanol and less for your water so this creates a high log p value and it will create poor absorption and no use in taking the drug right a very important thing you have to note so what is the thing you have to notice is that you should have a low log p value in order to have a low log p value you should have high hydrophilicity your drug should be more likely with water so one such data is given here in the picture over here so it has been shown that most of the drugs in the market which are available their log p value must not be greater than 5 so they have uh, compared all the drugs which are up, uh, which are traded now and they see that the most of the drugs were having log p value not greater than 5 see all are in the range of uh, like uh, less than 5 so most of the drugs fall under less than 5 and no negative values that you have to notice okay so 0 to 5 in this range you can have your log p values okay that has been found and it will be discussed later in certain rules in the next lecture series okay and see about 3000 drugs were found to fall under this line okay yes and the next uh, thing is your uh, molecular weight yeah this is one of the very important thing any drug should not have that much of weight okay that much of molecule lot of molecular weight indicates you have lot of elements in that elemental compositions and their percentage weight and everything and that will create a problems in excretion okay only some of the drug will be absorbed and transported to your body and the other things will be left over so you should be noticing that you should maintain a proper molecular weight see optimizing compounds for high activity on a biological target almost often goes along with increased molecular weights so so when optimizing this molecular weight plays an important parameter and see however compounds with higher weight are less likely to be absorbed so when you are molecules are your drug is having high molecular weight it will lead to less absorption and there is no use in taking the drug and it's not eligible to be drug like and thus trying to keep molecular weights as low as possible should be the desire of every drug forever okay so every drug forger should keep in mind it makes a drug which is less in molecular weight so it has been found that around almost all the traded drugs okay they have taken a statistic statistics which you can see over here and it has been found that all your drugs almost more than 80 percent of the traded drugs were found to have molecular weight below 450 you should have the molecular weight below 450 that is the range given this comes the another see for log s you add a range for log p you add a range and for molecular weight also you have a range and all these rules put together you will be discussing more how to de determine whether your molecule is drug like or not okay in the next video we will see the demonstrations for that okay so yeah that will be discussed uh, by karthik in the next series how to determine all the values i have introduced all the properties right uh, like the solubility the log s the log p the molecular weight details and all the things and we have more details about the drug score and everything which will be discussed in this video here he will be discussing about the lipinski's rule weber's rule all these are uh, the rules for determining whether your molecule uh, your drug is drug like or not and finally you will calculate the drug properties and it will be explained beautifully with the drug likeliness graph okay so you can see that video for more informations thank you